In this lecture, we're going to take a look at dihybrid and trihybrid crosses. Di means two, so that means that we're trying to predict the outcome of two different traits at the same time. If you take a look at problem number nine, you can see that we're dealing with pea plants and we're dealing with height, tall versus short, and then something about their seed pods. We have smooth versus wrinkled. So we have two traits that we're trying to analyze at the same time. Now, since we're getting into a more complex genetic problem, then we're typically going to see traits that are showing complete dominance, like tall is dominant to short, smooth is dominant to wrinkled. You will likely not see traits in a dihybrid cross showing incomplete dominance or codominance. Now, when you go to approach a dihybrid problem, there's two different ways that you can approach it, and one is better suited for a specific type of question. So, for example, if a question asks, what is the probability that this plant and this plant has offspring that have that phenotype, then I would recommend using two regular Punnett squares. And what I mean by regular is just the four squared Punnett's that we're used to. If a question asks, what is the phenotypic ratio of the offspring, they want to know what all of the offspring look like. So in this situation, I would probably recommend doing a 16 square Punnett square or we can simplify it sometimes down to eight squares or four squares, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's tackle this first question. It says, in pea plants, tall is dominant to short, and smooth is dominant to wrinkled seed pods. What is the phenotypic ratio that results from a cross between two pea plants that are heterozygous for both traits? In this question, they're asking us about the phenotypes of all of the offspring. So in this situation, it's best to use a 16 square Punnett. And here's how we set that up. First, we have to figure out the genotypes of the parents. So we have to read the question very carefully to figure out what the genotype of the parents are in this situation. It says, what is the phenotypic ratio that results from a cross between two pea plants that are heterozygous for both traits? So that means one parent is heterozygous for both traits. So this would be their genotype. And the other parent is the exact same genotype. It says both are heterozygous for both traits. So this would be that second parent. Now you have to figure out the different allele combinations that they can form in their gametes. So we're going to do, I think it's called the FOIL method in mathematics. I just draw arrows. So sometimes this individual is going to pass on a big T and a big S in a gamete. Sometimes they can pass on a big T with a little t. Sometimes they can pass on the little t with the big S. And sometimes they can pass on a little t with a little s. So those are the possible gametes this individual can make. In this case, since they both have the same genotype, then they can make the same type of gametes. So the second individual can also make these gametes with these allele combinations. Just like with the other Punnett squares, we bring them down and we take them across. And I like to write the big letters first, if there's big letters. So this is big T, big T, big S, big S. Big T, big T, big S, little s. So go ahead and take a second. You can hit pause and finish up your Punnett square. Here are the results that I got, and you can see in a situation like this, it's important to be neat so that you can easily read these 16 different squares. Now the question says, what is the phenotypic ratio? So we have to think about what these different plants are going to look like, what these offspring are going to look like. So when we analyze this genotype, we can tell that this plant or this offspring with this genotype would be tall, and they would have smooth pea pods. And this one would be tall and smooth as well. Here we have a tall, smooth, tall, smooth. Now, we can continue to figure out the phenotypes for each of these different boxes, but I'm already tired and I'm already bored. Here's a situation where it's nice to have some statistics memorized. Anytime you ever cross two individuals, and they're hetero for both traits. 
you're going to get a 9331 ratio. You just need to have that memorized. It's going to save you a lot of time. So if I went through and actually wrote down tall, smooth, uh, short, and wrinkled, and I figured out how many boxes go with each phenotype, this is what I would get. I would get 9 out of 16 are showing both dominant traits, tall and smooth. I would get 3 out of 16 would have a dominant and a recessive. So tall is dominant, recessive is wrinkled. So 3 out of 16 would be tall and wrinkled. I would get 3 out of 16 would be the recessive for height, which is short with the dominant, and that is smooth. And then 1 out of 16 is going to have both recessive phenotypes. So that would be short and wrinkled. And that's what I'm indicating in this box down here, is you would have 9 out of 16 with the two dominant traits, 3 out of 16 with the dominant and recessive trait, 3 out of 16 with the recessive and then the dominant, and 1 out of 16 recessive recessive. Let me show you another example where we have a 16 square Punnett, but I'm going to show you how sometimes you can simplify this down to 4 squares or 8 squares. It says determine the phenotypic ratio of the offspring. So again, they want to know what all these different offspring look like. So we're going to set up a, a big Punnett square. It says if you cross a heterozygous tall smooth plant, I'm going to stop right there, that's one parent. So heterozygous tall would be that, and to be smooth, it's hetero, again, with a plant that's homozygous recessive for both traits. So that means that it's little t, little t. So this individual plant would be short and would have wrinkled pea pot. Next, we have to figure out the gametes that they can produce. This individual can package up this big T with this big S. Big T, little s. Little t, big S. Little t, little s. And this individual can package up a little t with a little s. Little t, little s. Little t, little s. Little t, little s. If you notice on the side, we're putting the same genotype. So what we can do in this situation is we could fill out all 16 squares, but we don't have to. Since these are all exactly the same, we don't have to do these. So I'm going to cross through these right here. So let's go ahead and bring them down and take them across. Big T, little s. Big S, little s. Big T, little t. Little s, little s. Little T, little t. Big S, little s. Little t, little t. Little s, little s. Now you could do all 16 squares and you're going to get the exact same results. But you notice if you do this line, bring them down, take them across, you're going to get the exact same thing as what we have on that top line. So it's unnecessary that we complete all 16 squares. Again, the question was, what are the phenotypic frequencies for the offspring? So we get tall and smooth, tall, wrinkled, short, smooth, short, and wrinkled. So our frequencies are one-fourth, we can write tall, smooth, one-fourth, tall, wrinkled, one-fourth, short, smooth, one-fourth, short, and wrinkled. And sometimes you might have this as a multiple choice question and they just are listing ratios for you. So it's a one to one to one to one ratio. Now remember, when we first started off this question, it said determine the phenotypic ratio of the offspring. And in that situation, you probably want to set up a full 16 square Punnett square that we can maybe reduce like we did in this one. But here's a different type of problem. And they're asking for specific offspring with specific phenotypes or genotypes. The question says, what is the probability that this cross would produce tall, smooth offspring? Well, we can answer this question with a Punnett square like this. It's one-fourth, or it's 25%, because we can see that about one in four is going to be tall and smooth. 
But what I'm going to show you is a different way that we can solve this problem very quickly. And we're going to use the other method. We're going to use the two regular Punnett squares. So it says, determine the probability of producing tall, smooth offspring from a cross. So we're looking for a specific phenotype. And whenever they ask you to find a specific phenotype and the frequency of it, then I like to use the two Punnett squares. So again, it says that our parents, heterozygous, tall, and smooth. So there's my heterozygous, tall and smooth. And the other parents, homozygous recessive. So little t, little t, little s, little s. When you set up two Punnett squares, basically it's one Punnett square for one trait. So this one's going to be about height. And this one is going to be about the pea pods. So first of all, we have a big T with a little t, so that's one parent. That's what they can pass on, and the other parent can only pass on a little t. So bring them down, take them across, and we see that the chance of being tall is one half. So we're going to put one half tall. And with pea pods, this parent can pass on a big S, little s. This parent can pass on a little s, little s. Bring them down, take them across. So the chance of being smooth, because again, that's what we're looking for, tall, smooth offspring, right here. So it's a half smooth. And our final answer is just simply multiply those two events together. So the chance of being tall and smooth, if you have parents with these two genotypes, is one out of four which is the exact same answer of what we got up here, one-fourth, 25%. We just had a different method to solve for it. This problem is ideal for using the two Punnett square method to solve. If you want, you can attempt this problem and then check to see if you got the correct answer. Okay, so we have two different traits. So we've got a dihybrid going on here. Again, tall is dominant to short. And then we have colored kernels is dominant to white kernels. It says in a particular cross of corn plants, the probability of the offspring being tall is this, and colored is three-fourths. So you have to go back and figure out what would be the genotypes of the parents that would give you that probability in the offspring. So I'm going to tackle this using a Punnett square for each trait. It says the probability of an offspring being tall is one-half. This is where it's nice to have some of these different crosses memorized. So I need to figure out what would be the genotypes of two parents that would give me the probability of half of the offspring being tall. And I know if I cross a heterozygous individual and a homozygous individual, then I would get half tall and half short. So there's my half short. And it says the probability of the kernel being colored is 3 fourths. And again, since I've done lots of Punnett square problems, I have it memorized that if you cross two heterozygotes, then I'm going to get a 3 to 1 ratio, or 3 fourths dominant, 1 fourth with a recessive phenotype. So that would be colored, colored, colored. These would be white. So here's my 3 fourths that are colored. So it says, which of the following most probably represents the parental genotypes? So I know I have to have a parent that has a combination big T, little t, and big C, little c. And then I have to have a parent that has this combination. So I need a parent that is little t, little t, and big C, little c. So now I just look at my options. It's nice because the correct answer is the very first one when I'm comparing my answer to it. So. There's your correct answer. Take a second to read through example 13 and see if you can come up with an answer and then you can check yourself here in a bit. We have purple flowers are dominant to white flowers and we have round leaves dominant to pointy leaves. And it says a purple flowered pea plant with round leaves is crossed with a white flowered pea plant. What is the probability of their offspring being heterozygous for purple flowers? So again, they're wanting to know probability of a specific type of offspring. So this is where I like to use simple Punnett squares instead of a 16 squared Punnett. Since A is just dealing about one of the two traits, purple flowers, then all we have to do is set up a Punnett square about purple flowers. We have one parent that is big P, little p. 
And a white flowered pea plant would be little p, little p. So bring down and take across. So again, the question was, what is the probability their offspring is heterozygous for this trait? It's going to be one half or 50%. Part B says that we have 224 seeds from this cross. If planted, approximately how many plants should be white flowered with round leaves? So let's go ahead and do a Punnett square for leaf shape. And again, this parent was big R, big R. And the one with pointy leaves, in order for that to happen, they have to be homozygous recessive. So they're little r, little r. So bring one down, take one across. We're going to get the same thing in each one. And going back up to the question prompt, it says how many plants should be white flowered with round leaves? So let's just analyze first for white flowered. It would be these individuals right here. So they have a 50% chance or half chance of having white flowers. And then over here, we have a 4 out of 4, or we have a 100% chance of having those round leaves, which is what the question was asking. White flowered, round leaves. So we just multiply those two events together. So it's going to be 4 eighths, or half the offspring are going to have that phenotype, white flowers with round leaves. But you have to remember what the question is asking you. And it says we have 224 seeds. How many plants that come up from these seeds should show this phenotype? So we have to take 224 times 1 half. So 112 would be our answer. Now, for doing a trihybrid, we're going to deal with crosses that predict the outcome of three different traits. And again, since this is more of a complex genetic problem, you're probably only going to see traits that are showing complete dominance. So there's two ways we can approach trihybrids, just like with dihybrids. We could set up a big Punnett square. In this case, it's going to be 64 squares big. Or we can do some regular Punnets, and we, we would use three in this case. I don't want to set up a 64 square Punnett. So we're going to just focus on using these simple Punnett squares with four squares. Problem 14 says, what is the chance that the following two parents could produce a child that is this genotype? So first, again, we're going to focus on just the A's. And we know that one parent is homozygous. The other one is hetero. Let's focus on the B's. We have one parent that is hetero and one parent that's homozygous recessive. And then for the third trait, we have one parent that is hetero and so is the other one. So let's go ahead and do our crosses here. And now let's take a look at that offspring that we are trying to find the probability with. So the offspring has to be big A, little A, little B, little B, little C, little C. What is the probability? So first of all, the probability that it's going to be big A, little a is one half. So I'm going to write that down here. The probability that it's going to be little b, little b is also one half. And the probability that it's going to be little c, little c is one fourth. So we do the math. So the odds that we would get offspring with this genotype would be one out of 16. So you can see, again, it's like solving the dihybrids using two Punnett squares, but since it's a trihybrid, we're just going to use three Punnett squares. Whether we're doing trihybrids or dihybrids using this method, we are using what's called the law of multiplication. We're taking the chance of one event, we're times in it by the chance of another event, times it by a chance of a third event to get us that final probability. Now, on your formula sheet, you have this information which has to do with the law of probability and with some of these genetic crosses that we're doing. But I can say that I believe most students, they don't even look at this whenever they're taking their test. They don't even look at this part of their formula sheet because they just remember that you take the 
chance of one event times a chance of another event to figure out that final probability here. But let's do some simple problems that involve the law of multiplication related to other genetic concepts. So first of all, let's talk about a coin. We have the heads and we have the tails. It says, what is the probability that a coin flip results in heads? Well, we have a 50-50 chance. So we have one out of two, or 50% chance. What is the probability that two coins flipped simultaneously will both come up heads? So the probability that the first one comes up heads is a half, and the probability of the second one coming up heads is one half. So the probability of this event would be one fourth. Let's look at C. It says, you are big A, little a for a trait. What is your chance of passing the big A on? Well, that's one out of two alleles. So 50% or one half. If you are this genotype, what is the chance that you pass both the A and the B on in a gamete? So the odds that you pass on a big A is one out of two. The odds that you pass on a big B is one out of two. So your probability is 25% or one out of four. Now let's apply that to this question about gametes. E says, determine the possible number of gametes produced from a genotype of this. So this is the genotype of an individual, and they're going to pass on one of their two alleles to the next generation. So first of all, it says the possible number of gametes. I want to emphasize this is going to be a whole number. We're not going to have a fraction of a gamete getting created there. So looking at this genotype, we have two different alleles we could pass on. So I'm going to put a two there. For the Bs, there's only one type of B that I can pass on. For the Cs, there's two different alleles that we can pass on. Only one possible allele for the Ds, and then we can pass on one of two different alleles for the Es. So when I'm done, I just simply multiply, and that's going to give me how many different gametes we could make if an organism had that as its genotype. An example of some other types of problems that you might see related to gamete production and probability. So again, we're going to use the law of multiplication to answer these. And then before you come up with your final answer, just think about whether you should be showing a fraction or a whole number. So problem 15 says in a diploid organism with this genotype, how many genetically distinct kinds of gametes would be produced? Again, we're making gametes. So our answer should end up being a whole number. So again, we have two types of A's, one type of B, two types of C's, one type of D, and one type of E. So we can only make four different gametes with that genotype. Problem 16 says, what is the probability of producing a gamete with an allele combination of A, B, C if the parent has this genotype? Notice problem 15 said how many gametes, and this is the probability. So we're going to need a percent, like 25%, 50%, or a fraction. So keep it in mind, this is the combination that we're trying to create in a gamete. Think of what is the probability that this individual passes on a big A. It would be one half. This has one big A and one little a. What is the probability this individual passes on a little b? Well, all it has to pass on is a little b. So its probability is one. And what's the probability that it passes on a capital C? So it's got a big C and a little c. So the probability would be one half. So again, we're going to multiply these events together, and that gives us a 25% chance of producing a gamete if the individual has that genotype. Problem 17 takes it a step further because we're going to create gametes and then we're going to end up with a zygote. It says if one parent has this genotype, another has this genotype, how many genetically different zygotes can they produce due to independent assortment of chromosomes? So again, how many zygotes? We're going to need a whole number. We're not going to have half of a zygote or a fourth of a zygote. Using the same method, this parent can only pass on one letter, a big A, can only pass on a capital B, and can pass on one of two C's. This parent over here can pass on two different A's, there's two different B's, but there's only one type of C. 
So let's figure out the probability here. This is going to be 2. This individual can make 4 different gametes. And then we take 2 times 4. And that's how many different zygotes we can produce with parents that have these two genotypes. I think these problems are fairly simple, but you just need to pay attention as to whether they're asking you to determine how many gametes or how many different zygotes, and then you're going to be calculating a number that's whole. Or if it says what is the probability, then you're going to be coming up with a fraction or a percent.